Look at the picture on your screen. Can you identify this genius? And I'm saying genius because the body of work produced by this one person has changed the face of the world today. He was responsible behind so many things and it is often argued that he was probably the most intelligent person who ever walked the earth. Well, the most important discovery of his was when that apple fell from the tree. Yes, you guessed it. We are talking about gravity. We are talking about the scientist who explained that concept to us, Sir Isaac Newton. But in this videos in horizon of JM Financial Services, which is supposed to be about finances, why are we starting with a scientist? There is a reason behind it. Because while he is widely popular as a scientist, he was not just a scientist. His body of work is not restricted only to the scientific discoveries or mathematics. At one point in time, he was the warden at the Royal Mint, which was responsible for producing the currency for England. Consider that as an equivalent of the mint and printing company that the Reserve Bank of India runs. Not just about anybody can be put in charge of that. There are certain qualities required. And obviously being part of the mint, he had whatever little exposure to the field of finance as well. Highly intelligent, exposed to the field of finance. Currency of any country runs a particular risk called counterfeiting. Sir Isaac Newton was considered to be a terror for the counterfeiters. He had caught many of them and got them prosecuted. And some of them were sent to the gallows or they were hanged actually. So the punishment also was that severe. There's one very interesting story that happened during his lifetime. A company entered business during that period and raised money from public. But before we get on to that company, let's take a very quick look at one of the most famous quotes by Sir Isaac Newton. And then that will connect with the story that we are going to do. He said, I can calculate the motion of heavenly bodies, which is right. I mean, a great scientist, he could actually calculate the motion movements of the planets, the, uh, you know, uh, various stars, uh, the moons, he could calculate the motions of heavenly bodies. But he says, but not the madness of people. In the year 1710 in England, a company was founded. The name of the company was the South Sea Company. This company claimed that they had the rights to trade with the Spanish colonies in the Southern Seas, so essentially the Latin American uh, countries. However, the reality was far from the claims. They had no business plan and probably the intent were also missing. In other words, it was a plain simple con job. What they also promised was they'll raise money from public in form of equity capital and replace that with government debt, which essentially me meant that they'll fund the government of England through equity capital raised from public. So instead of buying government securities, people are now exposed to equity. And they promised regular dividends and stuff like that. And please remember, there was no business plan in the first place. Sir Isaac Newton bought some shares of this company. And now let me quote a book by Charles Kindleberger. So now let me quote an excerpt from a book by Charles Kindleberger. The title of the book is Manias, Panics and Crashes, A History of 
financial crisis. For a further example of an outside destabilizing speculator who bought high and sold low, there is the edifying history of a great master of the mint, Sir Isaac Newton, a scientist and presumably, presumably rational, somebody who would think logically, scientific bent of mind by the way. Kinderberger goes on further, on 20th April, the year was 1720, on 20th April, he sold out his shares in the South Sea Company at a solid 100% profit of 7,000 pounds. 7,000 pounds was a huge, huge sum in 1720. So that was his profit. And as Kinderberger says, 100% profit. Unhappily. And why this unhappiness? Because he thought he sold a little too early. Unhappily, a further impulse later seized him an infection from the mania gripping the world that sprung that that spring and summer so during that season he re-entered the stock invested 21000 pounds and lost it entirely later on a rational mind somebody who understood finance but got caught up in the frenzy and eventually in the first leg, he made 7,000 pounds. In the second, he lost 21,000 pounds. In the irrational habit, Kindleberger continues further. In the irrational habit of so many of us who experienced disaster, he put it out, uh, he put it out of his mind and never for the rest of his life could bear to hear the name South Sea the so-called avoidance behavior. Friends, let's understand genius may not mean investment prowess. High intelligence is not equal to being good investment ability because to be a good investor, you also need to be able to control the emotional urges and that's not easy. To repeat Sir Isaac Newton's words, I can calculate the motions of heavenly bodies, but not the madness of crowds. What he probably missed out adding is, and that crowd includes geniuses like me as well. Investment in securities market are subject to market risks. Read all the related documents carefully before investing.